Hello, and welcome to this video on narrative devices. Now, what does that even mean, narrative devices? Well, if you break it down, narrative is basically telling a story, and devices are ways that you actually achieve something, okay? Like you use a device to go from point A to point B, like a car or an airplane, or if you're trying to uh, fix your bicycle, you need a, a pump, a device, anyway. So narrative devices, basically, Tools are basically ways to achieve stuff dealing with the narrative. Whoa, because you're trying to get meaning across, and there's some tools you can use to do that. So let's look at some of the narrative devices we're going to talk about in this video, and we'll go through each one. So some of the narrative devices that narrative devices rather that are used is something called the simile. Almost looks like smile with an extra I, but it's pronounced simile. Metaphor. Personification. Imagery, hyperbole. Okay, I think that's it. That was a little more alliteration. Yes. Okay. So there are more than just these when it comes to narrative devices, but these are some of the more um, common ones, and we're going to go through each one to kind of explain what a what they do and what they are. Okay. So let's look at simile. Simile is when you are comparing two different things um, to help somebody understand something, and so if someone's trying to say, what is love? Well, love is like a red, red rose, okay? So you're comparing something you're, you're, with the understanding, okay, well, they say it's a red, red rose. They understand what a red, red rose is, and you're trying to explain what love is. So you're using something that's kind of unknown and comparing it to something that is known. Now, what makes a simile a simile is that it uses the word like, like, okay, or the word as. Okay, so you, when you have one thing and you're comparing it to another, you're using the word like, okay? Let's look at another one. As busy as a bee. Okay, well, how busy are they? Well, we want to, they, the understanding is that they know what a bee is. A bee is buzzing around, super busy all the time. Okay, well, they're as busy as a bee. So because it uses like or as, that makes it a simile. You're trying to help them understand how busy they are. Okay, and again, this is a way that a, a writer can help convey the meaning of something unknown to something that is known, simile. Now, metaphor is similar, okay, um, in the regard that you're comparing something unknown to known. The difference here is that you do not use as or like, as or like. You do not use those in a metaphor. He has the heart of a lion. Okay, well, kind of think of lions as courageous or brave or strong. So you're using this metaphor to help describe the character, meaning that they're brave or they're strong or whatever, however you want to do that one, okay? Music to my ears, okay? So it made me happy. It made me delighted. That was excellent news. It was music to my ears. You're using a metaphor, okay? Okay, well, music is something that's known to my ears. That's, you know, you're comparing something that you were told to something that you kind of know. Oh, music to my ears. Generally, music is considered to be a good thing, especially, anyway metaphor. Personification. Personification is when you subscribe a or put a personality, as it were, or a personal trait or a human trait or an alive trait to something that's not alive, uh, to an inanimate object. Okay, so for example here you have the scale cried out in pain. Well, the scale can't really cry out in pain. It's an inanimate object. It's just a thing. It can't cry out. Crying out is like a human trait or something that you know, something that's alive could do. Um, so you're you're using the idea that it, you're you're assigning a, like a human characteristic to something that's not human. Okay, basically the, what you're saying here is that okay, if this person's too big that it makes the uh, you know the scale. That's the you know the narrative device. The idea you're trying to get across is that they're too heavy. Okay, that's not the point. Um, this machine steals coins. Okay, so you're assigning the human characteristic of stealing, okay, it can't really steal coin, it's it's a machine. It just is broken. It's just not doing what it's doing. It's not stealing. Stealing indicates intention. Um, and so that would be where you give a human characteristic or a, a live characteristic to something that is not alive. That would be personification. So now let's talk about imagery. Imagery is dealing with really description. When you describe something, you're trying to have people imagine 
or see what's you know in your head imagining it okay and these really deal with the five senses description can be defined as the expression in vivid language of what the five senses experience so if you're trying to make a story come alive or write a story you know they, they want to relate maybe a particular sense or more than maybe more than one to help get the reader to understand and imagine and feel like they're there um, as far as this description you can, use, you can use imagery to help it's a narrative device to it's a tool that's being used to help um, get part of the narration across to the reader okay an example of detail okay oh my goodness so let's go ahead and read through this uh, tall thick green grass grew wildly and ferociously around the aged worn down reddish brickish brick estate which had been in its prime when big band music filled the airways and people chanted for the war the final war to end all wars to finally come to a bitter and unfulfilling conclusion linen slotted and torn from over use and neglect hung from a clothesline flapping anxiously in the midsummer breeze as if they could not wait to once again return indoors away from the threat of impending rain even if that meant returning to the decrepit house okay holy detail batman that is a lot of detail okay um so we're using all sorts of different um detail tools here as an example now compare that level of detail to this the house looked old okay they're both describing the same thing one's just using more detail than others okay so that begs the question well how much is too much well that's when we remember goldilocks and, and three bears here you want to have just enough description for whatever the narration is now sometimes your narration requires this much sometimes your narration requires this much it really kind of depends on the story that's being told and the level of the reader the intended audience um, so it's just a matter of really what that uh, the rest of the um, story is now i think emerging writers tend to do a little more of this the problem this can create is that it's really bogging down the story and preventing it from moving forward because basically if all we're trying to do here is just describe the fact that it's an old house that's probably too much information unless all this other information is dealing somewhat with the actual uh, story which it may or may not be doing okay so again Goldilocks and three bears okay now when using description mix it up don't use the same sentence structure throughout the whole essay so it's not all about just sight or it doesn't always have to be about smell I smelt burnt toast I smelt um, drying leaves okay that's the same sentence structure I smelt I saw I looked okay mix up the sentence structure and also mix up the description okay that's an example of just you know when doing that and now a good cure for using description for description and again this is kind of a just kind of defining a little bit more about using um, this is a narrative device make sure that you want to use the best details and describe them vividly and not vaguely and that's you know when you're doing your own writing for example vague the food was yucky okay well that describes something but what food and what made it yucky that's pretty vague it's not very clear why okay that's not very vivid it's not really using the best details an example of vivid would be the bacon was soggy and undercooked it made me gag when I took a bite of it okay we're talking about bacon what made it yucky soggy and undercooked made me gag you're actually then using some description how did it taste or how did it feel in your mouth okay that's more vivid all right now let's look at hyperbole um, you almost want to look at this like hyperbole okay but it's actually pronounced hyperbole this is another narrative device that is used um, and it's basically exaggeration okay this is the big fancy word for exaggeration and it's when you use that to evoke strong feelings or create an impression which is and lightly you know not to be taken literally okay so people use hyperbole all the time um, to get their point across it's a narrative device for example I've told you a million times not to exaggerate really a million that's a lot okay that's an exaggeration what anyway um, a million times anyway million that is probably an over exaggeration that is using hyperbole another example professor Morgan's ball spot was growing faster than the national debt okay um, yeah is it really growing that fast the national debt's going up pretty quickly anyway the point being is that it's not to be taken literally it's just an exaggeration to prove a point um, and again that's called hyperbole all right and then last but not least is alliteration alliteration 
is basically you repeat the same letter or consonant sound, okay? Because some letters sound the same, like S and C can sound the same, or C and K, kind of depending, at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words, okay? This is just a tool that is kind of, um, again, it's a literary device, it's a narrative device, but it's not as common. You see this more in poems than you do narration, okay? But some examples of this would be, the hummingbirds hovered in heavenly harmony. <sighs> okay, so hummingbirds hovered in heavenly harmony. So you're using the same consonant sound in, you know, throughout kind of whatever you're writing. That is an example of alliteration. Okay, another example. Patricia went to the party and pretended that she was people. She was a people person. Okay, another example of alliteration. Now. The challenge is, if you're doing, again, for poetry, that works um, kind of depending on what you're doing. For narration, sometimes you actually want to avoid alliteration because it can be a little distracting. You don't want to be distracting when you're writing unless you're trying to, you know, the letter P is very punchy. Patricia went to the party and pretended she was people person. You know, that kind of gives the illusion or like, pow, it's like a it's, you know, bow, bam, bam, bam. Whereas hummingbirds hovered in heavenly harmony. It's much smoother, much softer because it's a softer sound. It can also be an example of alliteration. Um, I mean, as far as narrative device. Anyway, so there you go. There's your lecture on narrative devices. Yay! Enjoy.